Welcome back to another review. I've got the new charger from Xstar in the VC4S and this was sent in via the company for review. Now this is an interesting model because they've updated quite a few things on this charger. So what I do as per usual, just give you a tour of the product and show you in more detail later on how it performs. The design of the charger is almost identical to the VC4 which was released quite a few years ago now but you do have two buttons instead of one on the LCD display. The slot length is exactly the same as the VC4. can only fit the unprotected 20 and 21700 cells in this charger because they haven't made it longer like some of the newer ones that have come out. Instead of the barrel connector we've now got a micro USB port and it also supports quick charge 3 and that means that I'll show you on the back here that you will have higher voltages which means you'll have faster charging speeds and they're listed out on the back so a maximum of 3 amp in a single slot or uh, 4 amps overall if you're using the quick charger and that drops down to 2 amps overall like the VC4 if you're down to the normal 5 volt so you have a choice with that and it's good to see that you have that quicker charge option but as we come on to a bit later on there are some drawbacks to that supplied cable is 80 centimeters in length with a red plug on it unlike the blue ones that I've looked at from Xstar before not all micro USB cables support that quick charge Powering up the charger now just to show you I do have it connected to the quick charge and that is why you're going to see the 9 volts come up otherwise a normal USB connection will give you your 5 volts and that's how we get the additional charging speed is with that extra voltage on the quick charge exactly the same way as you do with a phone faster charging speeds. Display has changed a bit since the VC4 we've now got the fuel gauges on all of the channels instead of the two larger ones and you still have the backlight which can be turned off and auto dims and you've still got the charging indicators red and green so you can see the battery status even if it's turned off giving you a close-up shot now the only problem that I have with this is that it's quite hard to see the numbers on the dials and I personally don't particularly like the display because of that it was a lot easier to see on the VC4 as I've inserted a couple of batteries we've got the red for charging and you can see the dials move up giving you an indication of the voltage and now it's counting the milliamp hour that it puts into the battery so that gives you an idea of the capacity if the battery is fully discharged. The dials do change depending on the lithium or nickel metal hydride obviously different voltages. Once you hit the left hand button you can go through from the how much it's charged into the batteries into the current charging current in real time and it has an internal resistance test as well. If you just insert the cells it usually takes about 20 seconds to come up with that because it has to apply some current. This charger is fully automatic and it's using that internal resistance measurement to determine how much to put into the batteries and I'll come on to that in more detail when I test out more batteries later on. If you press the right hand button you cycle through from your standard mode and then you go into what they call grading mode. I don't know what that does. I've asked Xstar. They didn't get back to me. It still seems to charge but I'm not exactly sure what it does. There is a storage mode so that will drop the voltages down on batteries. Honestly think this is only just for lithium cells. When you hit the 3.7 volts it will stop charging or discharging. That's really for storing lithium cells. It's not a mode that I would particularly use myself. It might come in useful for some people. Don't have any technical information on this because I wasn't provided any information via XSTAR and I didn't have a user guide. That was just something I figured out myself so I have no idea what the grading mode does. If I get any information about the grading mode I will put that in the comment section what that does but at the minute I just don't know what it does. Just in case you were wondering it is possible to fit four 21700 unprotected cells in there side by side. There is just enough room I would have made the contacts a little bit wider in the middle bays but you can get them in there at least I managed to with the four batteries that I have so if you're a vapor or something like that it can take the four at one time. As far as charging speed here I have the 21700 cell it's a pretty new cell did a test on it recently so if I hit the left hand button that shows me the internal resistance which is very low and then it will start to charge at quite a high rate this is three amps now this cell will take a three amp charge but I have no way of manually adjusting this other than to drop the USB input speed from 9 to 5 volts i.e. use a normal USB port or if I start adding batteries it will do a short period where it does a slower charge 
and then after about sort of 30 seconds or so it starts to increase the charging speed up to the full speed that it wants so in this case I have two cells charging at 2 amps which is acceptable but a single cell at 3 amp is a little bit high for me it's really a bit of a lottery in some ways the newer batteries seem to charge faster older cells that have higher internal resistance charge at a slower rate but really for me I am missing the fact that I can't change that speed on the charger for specific types of cell that to me is a fairly significant drawback and I'll come on to that a bit later on just to show you the space here with the 21700s not that much really I would have made the slots a bit longer I'm puzzled why XSTAR didn't make it long enough so it accepts the protected cells as well because they are becoming more common and more popular over time reverse polarity protection is something we see on most chargers and this has it as well so you'll just see the error message come up on the screen if you put a cell in the wrong way around once we've gone past the initial soft charge phase which doesn't take that long it will then determine via the internal resistance what charge level to give the battery and I found the internal resistance to be fairly accurate compared to the Dragon not as accurate but it's better than some of the chargers that I've looked at so that one was charging at an amp which is a bit on the high side this Olight cell, the 16340, I've had for quite some time and used it a lot so it has a fairly high internal resistance which you can see come up on the display and that means that the charger is going to give it a fairly modest charge rate around about half an amp which is what I would normally charge these cells at but I can't guarantee that all cells charge at this speed and sometimes they charge at one amp which for me is too high and it's the same procedure for nickel metal hydride you just have the flashing display there for a couple of minutes with a soft charge and then it goes to its full charge rate these are older cells again so they have slightly higher internal resistance so it decides to pick a charge speed of around about half an amp which is fine for these types of cells AA if I put an any loop in in good condition this is quite a new cell it wants to charge it at 2 amps and that is just way too high for an AA cell I've never charged a cell at that speed I'm putting a fairly new Sony AAA battery into the charger and because it's got fairly low internal resistance it decided again it wants to put 2 amps into that that is just not an acceptable charge rate for AAs and it's definitely not an acceptable rate for AAA batteries and I found this consistently with new cells it's charging them at a very high charge rate and I've seen it many times across different tests that I've done it will try to put 2 amps into the cell if you're using the quick charge and there's no way to stop that unless you're going to attach it to a 5 volt connection instead of the quick charge which to me defeats the point of having an intelligent charger so I'm really not happy with the charge speeds on this charger for nickel metal hydride cells I've now got a single 18650 that I'll insert a Samsung cell and this recommended charge speed on this is 1 amp and the maximum is about 1.5 it could take a 2 amp charge that would be pushing it a bit and it wants to try and charge this battery at 3 amps as well and that is really again a big problem for me because these types of cells that will reduce the lifespan of them considerably by charging them at such a high rate if you're vaping with those types of high drain cells then that may be okay for you but really you need to have a choice that's way above the recommended charging speed for that battery and it's just going to wear the battery out much quicker so I'm really not happy about the charger in that regard as far as the termination on the charger goes I didn't see any problems it was terminating the cells fine including the lithium and the nickel metal hydride the biggest problem by far is the charging speeds that you can't adjust yourself it's not a charger that I can recommend based on my own use because I wouldn't be happy to use the charger because you have to babysit it to see what it's putting into the cells and that shouldn't happen for an automatic charger and there are a couple of ways they could have solved this they could have done what other makers have done with the contact point so that the charger knows whether a larger or smaller cell is inserted and then default to either a half or one amp charging speed and give the user manual control over the charging so they can charge a higher rate if they want to or a slower rate that to me would have made a lot more sense so based on that and my overall experience I would have to say the VC4 is still a better charger, a much better charger because you can control the charging speed by using the inner or outer base it isn't as fast, that has to be said there are things that I don't like about it so I would personally stick with that myself or look at something else I honestly couldn't sit here and say that the VC4S I am happy with at all because of those flaws I'm just hoping that XTO will come along and fix some of the problems and re-release the charger 
I do have a video that I did on topics on battery chargers and that hasn't changed since this charger's turned up so do have a look at that and thanks very much for watching the video it is disappointing but I have to give you an honest review and this is my assessment of the XSTAR VC4S